Hi, I'm Michael Munstock. I work with AIBT. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 485 visa for international students. Many international students studying in Australia have heard of the 485 visa, but they may not be aware of how to apply. The 485 visa enables international students to travel, work, study, and prepare for future opportunities after they graduate. Today, AIBT will give you an in-depth look at the 485 visa and show you where you can find all the official information on how to apply and reference for your future. What most international students know about the 485 visa is that you need to study in Australia for two years. After graduation, you're eligible to apply, but many don't know that there are two different types of visas. So what's the difference? Why is that important? To start things off, let's head over to the Australian government's Home Affairs website to find all the information we need. Type into your browser, immi.homeaffairs.gov.au. Once on this website, go ahead and click on Visas and then select Working in Australia. Once there, click on Temporary Work Visas. On the next page, select Temporary Graduate Visa from the list of the options below. Once on the 485 Visa page, bookmark this page for future reference. As you can see, the 485 Visa is in two streams. The first stream is the Graduate Work Stream, or the Graduate Temporary Work Visa. And the second stream is the Post Study Work Stream, commonly referred to in the industry as the PSW Visa. The official description states, a 485 visa is a temporary visa that allows international students to live, study, and work after you have finished your studies. It's important to note that students who hold a valid 485 visa do not have work restrictions like the subclass 500 student visa. Therefore, you are eligible to work more than the 20 hours per week. Let's get more detail about these two different visas. The Graduate Workstream Visa is applicable to international students who have completed a course or courses with an AQF, Australian Qualification Framework, level lower than an undergraduate degree in Australia. The skills and qualifications required for a particular occupation. The length for this visa is 18 months, unless you are from Hong Kong and then you're eligible to apply for a, um, a visa for up to five years. Now, this visa is based around vocational skills in the vocational education and training sector, otherwise known as VET. The second visa, the Post-Study Workstream Visa, uh, or PSW, as we all know, applies to international students who graduated from an Australian university and have entered or completed a bachelor's degree or master's or higher. The difference is that this specific visa allows students to be able to choose their major of study and students are eligible to be able to stay in Australia between two to four years after they've completed their qualification. Today, we'll be talking about the temporary graduate visa. Click on the graduate work stream title and you can see the eligibility requirements on the right hand side. The basic requirements of the graduate work stream visa are you must be under 50 years of age, you must hold an eligible Australian visa, you have, must have held a student visa within the last six months prior to applying for the visa, have a qualification relevant to an occupation on the Skilled Occupations List, or SOL, have applied for a Career Skills Assessment, we'll talk about this later, to provide an adequate health insurance for all applicants at the time of application, provide proof that you have applied for an AFP, Australian Federal Police Check, and provide evidence that the required level of English has been met with the application. These are the basic requirements that most individuals know about applying for the 485 visa, right? But there are in fact additional requirements that must be met. So at the top of this page, you will note that there is an eligibility tab. Go ahead and select that tab. You'll note that there are a couple of boxes that have come down. On the right side of the page, you will notice that there's details boxes which explain additional requirements for each of the different um, line items on the left side. So let's go for an example. The first one, I believe, says meet this Australian study requirement. Go ahead and select details. 
On this area, you will note that there are six different areas or additional requirements in order to be able to meet the Australian study requirement. For example, the course must be registered on CRICOS, it must have been completed successfully, the course must have been taught in English, it must have been completed in no yet less than two academic years or 92 weeks of study, the course must have been completed in 16 calendar months, and the student must have held a valid student visa in Australia. Okay, so you must be a little bit confused. What is CRICOS? How do you know if you meet the minimum 92 weeks of study? What are 16 calendar months? Let's explain each of these concepts to you. Okay, we'll start with an understanding of CRICOS. The acronym CRICOS means Commonwealth Register of Institutions and Courses for Overseas Students. Okay, to find out more, we're gonna go ahead and click on the CRICOS registered link in the first bullet point, so that'll take you to the CRICOS website. Once we're on that website, you'll be able to know a little bit more information. This is the official Australian government website that lists all Australian education providers and their courses for international students studying in Australia. The CRICOS system is a list of Australian institutions that meet international registration requirements in order to be able to provide education for international students. Under Australian law, any Australian education institution that enrolls international students must register with CRICOS and courses for international students. They are all required to be in this system. Simply put, the Australian CRICOS education system is a registration database that all Australian education providers must register with in order to be able to recruit international students. To put it simply, when choosing an education provider, we must pay attention to whether the school and its curricula are currently registered on the Australian government. Please note that for schools and courses that are not registered on CRICOS, the future outcome for the 485 temporary graduate visa application will not be recognized by the Australian government. With this knowledge, we can navigate through the CRICOS website and check and see if our course and education provider are registered with the Australian government and satisfy a couple requirements for the Australian study requirement. Go ahead and select CRICOS institution code. As an example, we've entered our CRICOS um, number for AIBT, which is 03430J. This can be always found under uh, the confirmation of enrollment or your COE, as well as on our website. It's usually located on any education provider's website as well. Once we've entered the code, go ahead and select search. You can see that AIBT is a qualified educational institution registered on CRICOS. And after selecting the tab of list of courses offered by this institution, you will find that the courses offered, which are available and registered on CRICOS. On the top row, you can see the list of the course name, level, duration, and so on. Let's go ahead and select a course. On page two, we've selected Certificate Four of Asian Cookery as shown below. Click on the course and you will see more specific course information. At the top of the page, you'll see that the CRICOS course code, which is 093488A, and the VET National Code, SIT 40816, and the course level, Certificate Four, duration 104 weeks, course language, English, and other details. We can also see that this course is available in three locations, Brisbane, Sydney, and Hobart. Through the information provided on the CRICOS course homepage, we can confirm that the course is registered on CRICOS and is delivered in English. We can also see that the course is registered for 104 weeks by looking at the duration, which exceeds the 92 weeks of study required for the Australian study requirement. When you choose an education provider in one of its courses, you must confirm the authenticity of this information to avoid any issues to meeting the Australian study requirement. Now, let's take a closer look at the next steps to be able to identify the duration of the course in weeks and calendar months as shown on the 485 Visa Criteria page. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the next steps for identifying duration in weeks and calendar months. Go back to the Temporary Graduate Visa subclass 485 page and click on Eligibility tab. Then click on Meet Australian Study Requirement in the Details box. Here you'll find the information below. Okay. Now it says what is it meant by two years of academic study and also details a little bit more information below. 
First off, to verify if your Krykos registered course duration meets the requirement, look at the row that specifies duration or weeks and take note of its length. In the highlighted section, it states, you can take a longer to complete your course, but it will only be credited with the number of weeks that Krykos determines as it is standard duration. In the example they have given, if you take 92 weeks to successfully complete a course that Krykos states that should take 78 weeks, you will only receive credit for 78 weeks. Therefore, you cannot extend your course to meet the 92 week requirement. It's also important to note that if you fail any subjects, they will not count towards the 92 week requirement. So if your course is registered for less than 92 weeks on CRICOS, discuss with a professional to gain further information about your case before you decide on their course. Next, let's get a better understanding of the 16 calendar month requirement. 16 calendar months means that your qualification cannot be shorter than 16 months. Some providers allow you to be able to fast track a course and shorten the duration, but you must be careful not to reduce your studies below 16 months or you will be ineligible to apply for the 485 graduate work visa. As a general rule, students who choose a course that has a duration of 92 weeks meet the requirement of the 16 calendar months. It is also mentioned in this section that students may transfer credits from other CRICOS completed courses, which may reduce the amount of time to complete the course. For example, if you have received credit for your studies of another course that is registered on CRICOS, and then you could use these credits towards a new course, even if you did not complete the qualification of the other course. The actual period of study with the credit transfer and the main course combined may be used to meet the 16 calendar month requirement. However, if your study credits shorten the amount of time that you physically studied your course in Australia to less than 16 calendar months, then you may not meet the Australian requirement. Let's sum it up. If this is the case, you can simply have the education provider cancel the credits and complete the subjects needed for the qualification or complete the extra units in order to meet 16 calendar month requirement. To sum up, there's no problem with transferring your credits. Just remember that you still need to meet the 16 calendar month requirement. Next, we're going to look at the completion date requirement. You must apply for the 485 Temporary Graduate Work Visa within 16 months of the date you've completed your course. You can find the course date of completion on the date that you have first met the academic requirement for your qualification. And the date on this letter is clearly marked. For example, AIBT provides a completion letter to all graduates, and the date on this letter is clearly marked. The Department of Home Affairs will accept this letter as proof of course completion. They have also listed other acceptable forms to be able to provide proof of your course of completion date. If you find yourself questioning whether you meet the Australian study requirement, you can always contact your sales manager at AIBT or the student support team. Now that we have explained how to meet the Australian study requirement, let's go back and look at the next requirement on how to apply for the graduate work stream on the 485 visa page. Next on the list is have skills and qualifications that Australia needs. Click on details on the right side of the page, which will show you further requirements needed and further information about this requirement. You will see that a student will need to nominate one occupation on the medium and long-term strategic skills list, MLTSSL, and have a qualification that is closely related to that occupation and be assessed to prove you have the skills suitable for that occupation. Okay, so you must have a couple of different questions, like what is the medium and long-term occupations list? What are the occupations and why should I nominate them? What is a skills assessment and how do I complete it? Uh, how do I get accurate and complete information? And all those are really valid questions. Let's try to break it down a little bit more for everybody. A student's selected course must have a corresponding occupation that is on the medium and uh, medium or long-term strategic skills list, commonly known as the skilled occupation list. Let's see how you can make sure that your occupation is on that list. First, click on the link in the first bullet point which will take us to the list. On this page, click on legislative instrument link in the middle of the screen. After entering the legislative instrument page, 
click on Specification of Occupations and Assessing Authorities link located next to the temporary work visa for 485 graduates. Here is a complete list of occupations for the 485 graduate work visa and the corresponding list of assessment agencies. Using this list, we can confirm whether the vocational skills you are currently studying or you would like to study are included. In particular, this list is divided into a list of medium and long-term and short-term occupations. If you are applying for a 485 graduate visa, you must have an occupation that is on the medium and long-term list and not in the short-term list. Let's look at more information below. All right, so above and below, you can see that there is the medium and long-term list and the short-term occupation list. Occupations are noted on the left, followed by the ANZ SCO code, and finally, the assessing authority. Depending on the occupation selected, there will be a corresponding evaluating or assessing authority that will ensure that you meet the requirements of the course. This is a validation of the skills, knowledge, and placement. The different assessing authorities are shown on the right, such as VetAssess, TRA, AIM, and others. For example, for the occupation Child Care Center Manager, the corresponding occupational assessment agency is Trades Recognition Australia, or TRA. Now that you have some understanding of the Australian Strategic Skills List, also known as the Skilled Occupation List, or SOL, students applying for the 485 visa need to be aware of their nomination of their career on the application. Just a reminder that the occupation of choice and its corresponding qualification need to be in the medium to long term list. Let's move on to assessing authorities in Australia and what the common assessing agencies are. For students applying for a temporary 485 graduate work visa, the most common assessing agencies are Trades Recognition Australia, or TRA, and Vet Assess, which is Australia's largest skills assessment provider and authorized by the Australian government. Through these assessing authorities, you can confirm whether you've completed a career assessment based on the assessing body corresponding to the vocational course you are studying. You may still be a bit confused, so let's use some practical examples to make sure that you understand the occupation and its course are aligned with the assessing authorities. We have had students in the past ask, how can I confirm that my chosen career course and its requirements and occupation meet the needs of the temporary work visa for 485 graduates? So here's the example. AIBT has completed a list of current to mid and long-term occupations with corresponding courses, their duration, and the available locations that can be used to apply for a 485 visa in the future. Let's check it out. As you can see, the course name and code is on the left, nominated occupation, course length, and campus. Looking at this table, you can see that the selected courses meet the occupation requirement as well as the 92-week CRICOS registration duration when applying for the 485 temporary work visa. But how do you prove this? Let's check with the Trades Recognition Australia website, which is the assessing authority responsible for the qualifications and occupations in the table. Once on the website, look at the top right and select the tab FAQs. Then select Migration Skills Assessment. Scroll down to the question, what is the relevant Australian qualification for my nominated occupation? A PDF link will appear and shown below. Click and download this PDF to see a list of Australian qualifications by occupation. If you are having trouble accessing this link, just use our link below. In this PDF, you can see the ANZAC code, occupation or job names, qualification or course names, and qualification codes all recognized by TRA evaluating body. We should check the qualification code to confirm that the course of our choice is on the list of evaluating agencies. For example, we'll choose SIT 40816, Certificate 4 in Asian Cookery, and copy the qualification code located on the right side of the list. Next, we'll outline different qualifications that are recognized by TRA and also registered with AIBT. Let's go back to the table of AIBT qualifications and occupations which can be used to apply the 485 visa that are located on the list of current to mid and long-term occupations. 
Remember that this is the list that has all official nomination occupations, qualifications, as well as the names of the assessing bodies, which can be verified in the Legislative Instruments page on a case-by-case -case basis. Take a look at SIT 40516, Certificate Foreign Commercial Cookery. This is also recognized by Trades Recognition Australia. And there are further qualifications that we have outlined as well. You can note the qualification code and the qualification name, as well as the assessing body on the right. As you can see, these qualifications from AIBT can be found in the list of Medium to Long-Term Occupations list, or SOL. Upon completion of these courses, you will be able to apply to us for a skills assessment at the corresponding vocational assessing body. Now, let's take a closer look to find out more information about AIBT qualifications through the CRICOS website. Head back to the CRICOS website and select CRICOS Institution Code and enter AIBT's CRICOS code. 03430J. Click on Courses Offered by the Institution. You can see that there are five pages of vocational qualifications registered on CRICOS with AIBT. You can choose to apply for a course. You can always reference our page, deciding on the occupation and the course required to apply for a 485 visa. Now, let's go through an example of looking at the information of a specific course. On the second page, click SIT 40816, Certificate for an Asian Cookery. We've selected this one before. Once the course is located, click on it to find further details, including the qualification level, language of delivery, and duration and location. Once again, you can see that this course is registered in three locations in Australia and has the duration of 104 weeks, which meet the duration requirement mentioned earlier. Copy the VET code, SIT40816, and then click on the CRICOS logo located in the top right side of your screen. Once you click on Course Search and paste the code into the box, select Search. Now you can see that there are only two colleges in Australia that offer this course. One of them is Brighton Pacific, which is trading as AIBT. As an example, let's check out the first provider. When we click on our first college, we can see under the course locations that they are located in Sydney. Now go ahead and click on Brighton Pacific, trading as AIBT. The course is taught in three locations as mentioned earlier, New South Wales, Sydney, Queensland, Brisbane, and also Tasmania, Hobart. As we know that there is only one other provider registered on CRICOS, we can easily understand that in Queensland and Tasmania, AIBT is the only college that delivers SIT 40816, Certificate 4 in Asian Cookery. By following these steps, you can check any course that you would like to find more information about. Let's move on to our next topic. For those of you who are in process applying for the 485 visa, note that the highlighted text below which states, you must provide evidence for when you apply that you have applied for a skills assessment or we cannot process your application, which is very important. While many believe that you need a result of a skills assessment, this is not required as per the Australian government. You only need to provide evidence that you have applied for a skills assessment, not that you have completed one. Now you know more about the medium and long-term occupation list and the assessing agencies. If you would like to apply for a temporary 485 graduate work visa, you can follow these steps that we have talked about to select the nominated occupation in the list of courses and check the associated assessing bodies for the correct skills assessment. As another requirement we have not mentioned is the English requirement. You have to have this passport or this level of English, which is noted under the requirement for English. Once you click on the details box, you will note that the requirement is IELTS 6 with no individual band less than 5. If, however, you have taken another test such as TOEFL, IBT, or PTE academic, the relevant requirements can be found in the links on the list. Now that we are at the end of our information session, let's go over some changes that have been made due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. Students currently applying for a student visa or future program can start their course by remote learning with AIBT. Overseas and online training will be calculated into the 92-week duration requirement of CRICOS registered courses. 
Gradu graduation will not be delayed as a result of the global pandemic or distance learning. As a result of the above, students can still meet the requirement for applying for a 92-week CRICOS registration course for the 485 Temporary Graduate Work Visa. Students can even apply for a 485 Temporary Graduate Work Visa overseas if they have completed all their course or courses and the Australian border remains closed due to the pandemic. Students applying abroad may not be subject to the six-month restriction before they apply for the 485 visa. For example, for those who are unable to return to Australia to submit their applications due to travel restrictions relating to the COVID-19 pandemic, the time for applying for the 485 visa within six months of graduation is extended to 12 months after completion of your course. The validity of the 485 visa, 18 months to five years, is calculated from the day the passport holder enters Australia. Essentially, due to the global pandemic, if a student completes an online qualification and is currently located overseas and meets the requirements and is eligible to apply, they can apply for the temporary work visa while still abroad. Many students are not applying for the 485 visa because they are worried that the duration of the visa will be shortened, when in fact this is not the case. The visa validity validation period is calculated from the date the visa holder lands in Australia. So don't hold off on applying for your 485 visa. Apply now to be able to meet the requirements. If you're interested in reading up more about this, details can be found in the Legislative Instruments section on the Australian Government website. You now hopefully have a better understanding of the process a student must go through in order to appropriately choose a qualification that leads to a 485 temporary graduate visa. During this session, we've outlined the process of the course selection, verification of the course's duration on CRICOS, corresponding occupation, and the validation of the associated assessing body. All of these relate directly to the requirements needed to submit an appropriate application for the 485 Temporary Graduate Work Visa. So why are you waiting? Talk with an AIBT sales manager today to be able to jumpstart your career. Learn more about courses by going through our website, aibtglobal.edu.au backslash courses or you can find out more about talking to a sales consultant by going and talking to our sales team. Really appreciate all of your time today. Thank you so much. And we look forward to talking with you soon.